All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Hall, who is in lovely Sydney, Australia. How are you doing, Steve? I'm pretty hot and sticky, thanks. Uh, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm here and uh, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice afternoon here in San Diego. So, I, to be honest, I feel like we're both in two of the best places in the world right now. So sorry if anybody's jealous. Can't help that. <laughs> well, we are. But at the moment, Sydney's suffering from um, dust storms, thunderstorms and bushfires. So it's uh, not as pleasant as it can be. Yeah, well, we unfortunately get some of those uh, as well. Thankfully, we haven't had anything too devastating lately, but we've had every every couple of years they come through. Um, so Steve, as you can tell, is uh, from, originally from the UK, uh, now domiciled in Australia for the last 40 years. Uh, like myself, I'm from Ireland and I'm domiciled in the US for the last 20 plus years. And what we're going to talk today about is Selling at sea level, and you can see from uh, Steve's background there, he's he's used to all things sea related. But in this case, we're talking about obviously the C suite. So, uh, so uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about when you say selling at sea level. What do you mean? Because sometimes, like people, people get a little bit nervous, a little bit uh, you know scared when they're confronted with the dreaded like sea level C suite moniker well look my answer to pretty much every sales question is it depends it depends what you sell it depends who you sell it to it depends on the value it depends on a heap of stuff but my target audience are people that say high sell high value products and services b2b and by high value i'll mean anything from you know hundred thousand up to the many millions mm -hmm. um so when you sell something that is relatively expensive from the perspective of the buyer, then the person that signs the check is, is higher. Yep. And if they don't know why they're signing the check, then there's a pretty good chance they could decide not to. So sea mm. level, if you, if, you can sell, if you can save Amazon a million dollars, you're probably not going to talk to Jeff Bezos because he spends it on lunch. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you've got to look at, you, you, so sea level is basically the highest level person has any involvement in authorizing what you're selling does that make sense yeah yeah totally and so uh your executive your successful executive coaches and you have a sales mastermind uh, there in the apac region and you coach and mentor a lot of people so how do you help people make that step up to be able to sell at a higher level because often uh people will get stuck selling at, at lower levels or they'll get really comfortable with say somebody who is really just a door opener or but they stay at that level instead of having the confidence to actually move up and really engage with the people who matter. Well, I'll give you my standard answer. It depends. Um, it depends who you are and, and, and who you sell to. A lot of people, as you say, don't try to sell to the top level because they don't have the confidence. Um, but some people shouldn't because they don't have the knowledge. If right. you do get in front of a, um, a senior executive in one of your target accounts, it's very, very easy to make a fool of yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand their business, if you don't understand their perspective, and if you don't have something they care about. So the biggest challenges I help people to overcome are, first of all, having the confidence to sell at that level. Secondly, getting a meeting at that level, because the people at that level have got a lot of people after their time. And most mm -hmm. of the people that are after their time are people they care about. It's their board. It's their peers, it's their direct reports, it's their employees, it's their own customers, it's their own um, suppliers. Um, and people trying to sell them to it is way down the list. So getting, them, getting, that, getting a meeting is, it can be a challenge if you don't know what to do. And then once you've got that meeting, what do you do? Because a lot of people get a meeting at that level and they do what people call you know, show up and fur up. They talk about themselves, their products and everything, and they don't really add a huge amount of value. So I'm sure you've seen the statistic that um, was 83% of decision makers reckon that sales calls are a waste of their time. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a big fan of statistics, but I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if that almost fairly accurate. So, yeah, I I help, think, so go on. 
No, I was going to say, and I think uh, just a couple of points to pick up on there. I think what you said that these meetings are at a premium. And to be honest, sometimes they're going to come out of the blue, like it's not going to be on your time frame. Suddenly it's, I mean, I've had this happen to me in the past with a, a multi-billion dollar company when suddenly it was, our CEO has 20 minutes right now. Can you step into his office and, and talk to him, right? And so you, so these kind of meetings, sometimes you just have to be prepared for them because you don't know when they're going to come. Well, when that happens, which it would be unusual, but suppose it does, you, you need A, to know the value that you add to that sort of company. And B, you need to know what that company cares about. Now, in that particular circumstance, unless a CEO from a company that you've never heard of calls you out the blue and says, talk to me, which yes. is highly unlikely, then presumably in that circumstance, it was a company you knew something about and you knew what their priorities oh, yeah. were, what their problems were, and you knew how you could help them achieve their goals. Uh, yeah, if no, you absolutely. don't, then it could easily be a mistake because people talk about discovery calls and spin selling and asking questions, and that's all very well. But if you go into a senior executive and you say, what keeps you awake at night or what are the top three priorities, the answer is probably going to be, if you don't know that, why am I talking to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, so I, and so I think part of the thing is, I mean, underlying, underpinning everything you're saying is that if you want to sell at this level, you better have your homework done. You better have your research done. You better be on the ball. You better really understand the business of whoever you're talking to. You better understand what the issues are. And you better be ready to, to have a valuable conversation where you provide some insight, right? That's absolutely right. And, the, the, and the, what that implies is that you can't do it en masse. You can't sell at sea level to 100 could be people at once. You have to do it one company at a time, which means you need to know who the target companies are that you focus on where you've got the biggest possibility of winning because to get a meeting at sea level, to sell at sea level, to do the research takes time, it takes effort, and it takes money. And you don't want to do that if someone just bought what you sold or if they don't have a problem that you can help them, help them with. So, you need, so the, to me, the essence of selling at that level starts with picking the right targets. If you're targeting them wrong, I always say, you, 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 you know, the, the people say about a salesman, you, know, you could sell ice cream to Eskimos. And maybe you could, but why would you when there were people in deserts clamoring for them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a great point. And I think the other point just to pick up on there is what you said is, yes, if you're selling at this level and you're selling high dollar um, value items is yes, you, you can't, you can't chase a, you know, a hundred or 200 at the same time. So you have to be, you have to be really careful about qualifying and qualifying out as much as qualifying in. Right. Well, that's right. I mean, by qualifying, I don't, the, the normal qualifying is, you know, have you got a budget? Have you got a time frame? Have you got the authority? That sort of qualifying is, is old hat. The first level of qualifying is done before you talk to the company. It's understanding who your ideal customer is, what industry they are, how big they are, where they are, what problems that they potentially have. That's the qualification you should do first. Because if you're, if you're shed, trying to schedule a meeting with a CEO or a CFO or a CIO, you know they've got the authority. You don't have to ask them that. <laughs> and you don't necessarily want them to have a budget because if they've, the process of getting a budget involves doing a whole heap of research. And by the time someone's got a budget, they've decided they've got a heap of problems. They've decided which problems are a priority. They've decided which direction to take. If, you, if your problem is, I can't, I'm not selling enough, I'm not making enough profit, then you can do a heap of things. You can cut expenses, you can sack salespeople, mm -hmm. you can buy a, a, a tool, you can do sales training. If they've made a decision to go in one direction and you weren't involved there, then A, they may not go in your direction, and B, someone else has helped them go in that direction, and it wasn't you. So by the time they've got a budget and the time frame, you probably they've probably got a pretty good idea who they want to buy it from as well. So you have to obviously have an also built in, and it's natural for larger type deals, uh, is that you have to have a some patience and a process, knowing that this is going to be could be quite a long process if you get in early enough to be able to influence it in the way that you're talking about. Well, yeah, I mean, often it is a long process. It, it, it is a long process naturally. I mean, I used to sell ERP systems, and mm -hmm. it is not an impulse purchase. 
The CEO doesn't get up and think, oh, I think I'll buy an ARP today. Who should, who should I let me let me look? Oh, there's SAP and Oracle. Which one shall I pick? Yeah. Toss a coin. You know, it it don't happen that way. Uh, and if you if a company is spending money on something that impacts them strategically and that's going to cost them a lot and it's going to last a long time, they have got a buying process which you're you're going to be struggling to get them to shorten it. You may get them to move it in your direction, but if you get to them at the beginning of that buying process, it improves your chances dramatically, but it also means you do need to be there through the entire stretch of whatever that buying process might be. And it certainly doesn't start when they're out there looking on the web for uh, looking at your white papers and case studies. It started long before that. Yeah. And, and the other part is, I mean, you obviously have to uh, <coughs> understand and get them to outline for you what the buying process is if you don't know it. I'm sorry, I missed that. There was there's someone outside hammering things. Oh, okay, no worries. Uh, no, what I said was uh, obviously. Then you also have to understand their buying process, right? So that I mean, that's one of the first things that you have to really understand. I mean, maybe you've been through it with them before, which is fine. But buying processes change, and buyer behavior changes, so you have to validate that as well, right? Absolutely, and you also have to start, you also have to assume that from their perspective, it isn't a buying process. It's a problem-solving process. Yeah. And that process of solving problems starts long before they make a decision to go in a particular direction and even longer before they make a decision to buy a specific product or solution. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need to be talking to people early. But it also means, that's also why, you know, because you've got targets to meet, the, tar the, the people you sell today are probably people you were talking to a year ago. I, the biggest deal I sold was... Um, a deal to sell our, for, for our ERP software throughout Europe. And I was talking to that company for eight years before they made that decision. Now, they were never going to make that decision sooner. Mm -hmm. But if I hadn't been talking for that length of time, I wouldn't have got the deal. Now, I obviously had to make sales to other companies of other things in that process. So you've got to be looking both short-term and long-term. And one of the challenges we have at the moment is that in sales, people are judged purely short-term. And then they get the boot because they can't make the targets short term and they bring somewhere else in and no one's taking that long term view. Yeah, I mean, it is a, it, it is a, it is a challenge, uh, obviously, uh, especially when sales cycles you know, are long and, uh, and you don't really have a good time frame. I mean, often you don't have a good time frame on it because, as you say, it's not a, it's not a buying process as much as a problem solving process. And the nature or severity of the problem can ebb and flow at times too, right? Well, I, I, I always say there are two lines. There's, there's, the, there's the pain line where a company realizes that this problem's causing them pain. And there's a priority line, which is mm -hmm. when it's such a pain, they need to do something about it. And that's not necessarily the same thing. Yep. Because, I mean, in your company, I'm prepared to bet you've got a lot of different problems because everyone has. But the ones that are prepared to do something about that's a different, a different story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes when you hit that closure line, all of a sudden things move really quickly. Oh, this is a problem, but I, I can live with it. I can live with it. I can live with it. Oh, hell, I can't live with it. I've got to do something quickly. Yeah. So, it's, so I'm not necessarily saying that all buying processes are slow, and they are certainly not, they certainly don't move at the same speed throughout the buying process. Yeah, so you have to be flexible because it's a good point. Uh, or there's two good points there, actually. The one is um, all problems aren't created equally, and that's a that's a trap that you can fall into when you talk to a prospect and they they highlight an issue or problem that they have. You know, jumping on it immediately and thinking, "Great, great, this is something I can help with." Before actually finding out, as you said, is this something that they can live with? Is it a problem, but one not big enough for them to make any? any issue with. And the second part is being nimble because you don't know, as you say, you don't know when that problem is suddenly going to blow up. Um, you know, some, some, there's some, something catastrophic happens or some mistake happens and say, wow, okay, we need to fix it now. So you need to be ready to, to move. That's right. And the other aspect, of course, is that when we talk about a prospect, it's as if it's a single entity. But if you're yes. selling high value products to and services to businesses, you're dealing with a lot of different people. There's the ultimate decision, there's the ultimate approver, there's the decision maker, there's the users, there's the people that implement it. And each one of them has got a different perspective of A, what's important to them, and B, what the priority is. So something that's a priority in the mailroom might not be a priority in the boardroom. Yeah, and vice no. versa. 
Yeah, and and nowadays with the, with the changing na- nature of work, etc., is that uh, you can often be uh, the people involved in the buying process may not even work in the company. You've got contractors, you've got analysts, specialists who come in, so you have quite a quite a universe of people on the buying side. And it seems to some degree that it's almost getting like there's more people involved than ever. I well, again, the, the, my ultimate answer is it depends, but yes, yeah. often often there is. I mean, sometimes people are so petrified of making a bad decision, they outsource it to a consultancy on the basis that if it goes wrong, it's not their fault yeah. and they can sack them. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's certainly been, was the case with, in, in my day with uh, selling ERPs. And we tried to avoid those deals as much as possible because most consultants worked on the basis of what was best for them rather than what was best for the customer. Or am I being cynical? Um, oh, I don't know. I think I think there's a in, in, behind every cynical comment is an element of truth. <laughs> um, okay, well we're coming up against the end of our time here, Steve. Uh, but before we go, could you tell people a little bit more about your organisation and what you do? And all the information will be in in your bio as well. But can you just give a little bit of background on your organisation? Well, as, I mean, my my company is Executive Sales Coaching Australia. I work with companies that sell high value products and services to a large organized corporations, and I help them get through sea level doors and know what to do when they get through that door. And I tell all my customers that the most important skill that any salesperson can have selling at sea level is being able to understand things from the perspective of the person you're talking to and being able to talk to them in their language about their problems, not your language about your products. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, sage advice there. It was for everyone to take. And as I said, we'll have all of Steve's contact information in his bio. This is Steve. This is great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning from lovely Sydney. Uh, my I name is John. Well, I, hope, I hope San Diego's fun. Yeah, yeah. San Diego's always fun. I can't complain. If I was to complain about San Diego, I really just get abuse from people who live elsewhere in the world. So it's not worth it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliners CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.